and songwriter, we had the opportunity to talk to Femme. My brother Sean Olbs of the Eiffels was able to talk to Femme over Zoom. Over the past couple years, Femme has both been featured on and co-wrote songs with a slew of artists including g Easy, Machine Gun Kelly, Lil Tracy, and more. She has toured the world supporting artists such as Lil Xan and Grandson. Her Vacuum Head EP, which was released last year, has racked millions of streams and gained her a cult following. Having remained somewhat quiet in 2020, Femme is now gearing up to release a series of new singles. You can watch our interview with Femme and Sean Olbs from the Eiffels on our Facebook page and YouTube channel at Bringing It Backwards and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bringing Back Pod. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. We're Bringing It Backwards with Femme. Hello. Good morning. Good What's morning. How are you? I'm <laughs> Not great. much. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Where are, you, where are you at right now? I am in the Valley. I'm in Sherman Oaks. Oh, okay. You're in Los Angeles too. You're not far. Yeah. From, I'm in uh, Highland Park right now. Oh, nice. How are you enjoying this gloomy weather? I'm actually, I, I've been, I feel like it's been too hot too long. So I'm kind of digging it a little bit. You're a fan. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I am definitely a fan. I love this weather. I think it's it's about time. And also, it kind of gets you in the spirit for Halloween, you know? Yeah, kind of getting more cozy <laughs> around here. Yeah. So uh, are you? Uh, are we going to do a phone call today, or do you want to do video too? Yeah, either way, um, either way works. Calls, f- phone call is cool, if that's cool with you. It's sure, a podcast, sure. right? Yeah, 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 it's a podcast. Okay, we awesome. do we, we do both, but we could shut off the video for now. Yeah. Um, so um, I um, I'm really stoked uh, to hear your story because you got uh, you've been doing some crazy stuff lately. So um, so looking forward to hearing about it. But uh, but before we hear about what you've been doing recently, why don't you take us all the way back and, and tell us how you got into music? Oh, OK. Um, I started out really young playing piano and then I switched to drums and was a drummer for a while Mm. did that whole thing um and then after a while i was playing in bands and all that growing up and decided i wanted to take a crack at songwriting and um i started doing that i was top lining and helping other people write and then eventually what ended up happening was i wrote a hook for g easy um i was pretty close with him and his manager at the time and a producer named jono and um They wanted to keep me on the song. It's called Just Friends. So I created the project Femme, even though I kind of already was beginning to do that. Um, And that kind of just happened organically. They wanted to keep me on it. So I was like, okay, hi. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's one way to do it. So you're playing piano. And then how old were you when you started writing music? I mean, I always kind of was writing poetry and you know what I mean? So I feel like it was always kind of in my blood, but I didn't really take it super seriously until like people started calling me into rooms and stuff. And one thing just kind of leads to another, you know, and then you're like, oh, whoa, okay, here we go. Yeah. So that that was like in high school, you were playing piano and and, and singing and stuff. Mm, Yeah, more like middle school. I mean, I've always kind of kept playing, you know, I never really stopped, but I guess they all kind of intertwined with each other at this point, (laughs) right? because I'll I'll be in sessions now and I'm like, yeah, let me just like give you the drum beat that I hear, you know, or let me me just change this chord to this or that. So I feel like all the elements kind of just come together and help. Yeah. So top lining for for the casual listener, uh, that's basically where you're you're coming in and you're you're doing the vocal on on a track that's that's been produced or is that that's being produced, right? Yeah, yeah, like the hook. Mm-hmm. And, and so how did how did that happen? Because how do you go from playing piano or playing drums and and just casually writing music to mm-hmm. to someone actually knowing that you are a good enough singer or an interesting enough singer to to be like hey I mean, you, wanna, you wanna get on this track? I've never really been a great singer, you know, and I always tell people it's really not about the technicality of anything. I think it comes down to emotion, you know. If people sure. feel like you're emoting, then they connect with you. So I think, you know, I don't really look at things too critically or 
I just kind of go with it, you know, and like whatever feels right. And I can't really even tell you how the fuck any of this happened. It just kind of <laughs> did. And anything that I've ever tried to plan or make happen doesn't work. So I just kind of go by the vibe of like, just do what you love doing. And it's just all going to come to you. And, and I know it sounds like floofy, like spiritual shit, but like, it just, that's just my life. Like I'm just speaking from experience, you know? No, I mean, <laughs> so many artists say the same thing. So, uh, okay, I mean, cool. I, it must, it must be true. Um, uh, but, uh, the, but I totally agree with you about, uh, you know, as, as far as your technical skill with, with singing and how it doesn't not, not, not agreeing with you saying you're not a great singer. Cause I actually think you are, but, um, oh, but thanks. saying the, that, that technical ability with singing doesn't really matter. Some of my favorite singers, some of the best and most well-known singers, I feel like, didn't have a crazy range or anything. You know, look at the look at Mick Jagger, look at Mick Jagger, look at the Beatles, look at uh, Bob you know, Dylan. just yeah, Bob Dylan, <laughs> Bob Dylan especially. I feel like he's the go-to to be like, you don't need to sing no. if you're going to be an artist. I but, know. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's about, it's about the style, and it's about uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So and and you definitely got that in spades. So uh, <laughs> so you you have a mutual friend in G Easy any any and they want mm -hmm. you to they they feature you on this track and and then is that how what did did that start a big snowball was that kind of like a pivotal point I mean I got lucky man because like you get out the gate with like fans you know people who just they care and they want to listen and get to know you that was just so beautifully gifted to me I can't even tell you because yeah, it was so random and also just kind of helped kickstart everything. Right. And, and then I, I dropped a few songs after that myself. Um, mm -hmm. And then randomly, <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> randomly Lil Xan DM me and was like, yo, uh, I'm taking you on tour. <laughs> I was like, for sure, dude, I'm down. I had no manager, no label, no uh -huh. nothing. I was just like, sure, I'll figure it out. Whatever. Uh -huh. Let's let's do it. That's and, that, that's so. Did you know him? Did or was it? You know, it's kind of funny because like I didn't really know him that well, but we, we were DMing just as friends, and I would comment like stupid shit on his photos all the time. I was like, this dude probably thinks I'm crazy, but I just like was like kind of trolling, but like being funny about it, mm -hmm. and like I guess he was just like thought it was funny too i don't really know how that happened he was just like i fuck with you i fuck with your music i want to take you on tour and i was like hell yeah and you know the funny thing about it is his booking agents planned an entire tour um because it was like a two-month whole thing and um they had given different artists like a week at a time all these rapper dudes or i don't know i don't even know i think one of them might have been um Lil Mosey. That's the only name I really remember. Mm -hmm. And Zan was so pissed because he's like, bro, I told my agents I didn't want anyone else on this tour. And they were like, what are you doing, dude? Who is this girl? She's like a nobody. <laughs> she has like no fans. And uh -huh. he and he was DMing me. He's like, I just don't give a fuck. Like, this is what I want. It was crazy. I'm like, you don't even know me that well. But it worked out. We had a blast. And that was like, I would say that was like the second the second big moment, you know, to kind of kickstart into the next phase of whatever. Yeah, totally. Life Oops. is. So did that, ha did you guys meet just via these funny comments? Were you like a fan? And, and so you're just dropping funny comments and then he kind of sees you dropping comments and he's checking out your stuff and kind of, and then. Yeah, that. I, I think so. And, you know, like I always thought about Zan as like, I mean, he's just a magical person, you know, whatever he comes across online, I don't really know, because obviously I know him now, but he's like, like magical, you know, you just get around certain people and you're like, damn, I get it. And he's one of those people. I think he's just like an old soul. And I mm -hmm. think he, you know, obviously like life happens and you get mixed up and confused, but like the, the core of that dude is like so good. I just really think he's a special person so i don't know we just connected totally no that's 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 epic so so g easy you know no big deal <laughs> puts you on a track and then uh and then lil xan uh just dms and says hey let's go on yeah. a tour and so uh, you want to hear the next part here I you do. go ready for round three of my <laughs> crazy life that i can't tell you how to recreate <laughs> uh-huh 
So I'm on tour with Zan and then we stop one night in Indianapolis and everyone's like, dude, MGK, MGK has a show. Let's go fucking meet up with him. You know, whatever. I'm like, sure, let's go. I don't really know a ton of MGK songs. I knew Rap Devil at the time. I think that was like really big. Mm -hmm. I, I met him. I was like, holy fuck, this guy's energy is crazy. I mean, I can't even explain to you. Like there's just certain people where you're like, I just want to be around them. And I remember I got back in the van after meeting him and I was like, I'm going to work with that dude. Like, I just was like, I'm going to do it. And I told my tour manager, the guy driving, I was like, I'm going to work with, I'm going to work with him. And they were all just like, okay, like kind of laughing. <laughs> and I just listened to everything he had on Spotify for like mm-hmm. the entire drive to wherever we were going. And then I ended up linking up with the producer. He was sending stuff to him wrote 53666, sent it to him. He fucked with it. And like, he ended up living like down the street from me randomly. And like, that's how that happened. Wow. Is, is yeah. that, are, do you live in the Valley right now? Is that, is so mm-hmm. you guys, okay. You So you guys both live in the Valley. Do you, yeah. 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 I was, uh, I was just talking about MGK the other day and how, um, how, how cool it is that he, that the new album, it's just like, uh, it's so, so good. Like, it's so, you know, early 2000s nostalgic mm-hmm. punk, but it, 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 but it's, it's, it's crazy how he is making that seem more relevant than the bands who are most of the bands who are actually doing that and have been in that for, for a while now. So it's, I don't know. I know. It's, just, it's, 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 it's like, fun. It's it's him. It's it's Travis. It's fucking yeah. Nick Long. I mean, K Thrash. Like the crew, Omar. Like the crew they have is just. I mean, top top people making that stuff. Who all are come from that background, you know. Totally. So it is. It's an incredible album. I've listened to it so many times. I'm so proud of him. He's like, he is like the definition of an artist in all areas. I mean, he acts. He's writing. He wrote a movie. He just shot a freaking movie. It's like. He literally is like so tight. I, I'm so lucky. I have like the coolest friends. <laughs> yeah, I was at, what, when we were talking about him, we were we were wondering, you know, because he uh, maybe like a year or two ago played um, Tommy Lee in in the Dirt um, in that mm-hmm. Molly Crew movie, and uh, we were like, I wonder if that had any uh, effect on just his psyche uh, of mm. you know of being geared more towards uh, rock music. You know, he's mm-hmm. got that rock star mentality and then he's, you know, and then maybe that, that helped, helped inspire him. And, and, and yeah, mm-hmm. the, new, the new albums, to- you can totally hear the blink influence in there. So you can totally hear Travis, uh, Travis in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, he killed it in the dirt. Great yeah. Movie. Yeah, he did. It's, 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 it's a crazier book. If you ever want to just read like the ultimate rock star book, it's like the crazy book. And um, so they couldn't, I, I, you know, there was no way they could have put some of the stuff in the movie and they didn't, but, uh, oh, man. <laughs> if you want to ever read the quintessential rock star, ridiculous eighties, you know, rock star book, that's the, it's a great I might book. might have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So G easy, big turning mm-hmm. point. And mm-hmm. then Lil Xan, another huge, mm-hmm. and then just kind of met MGK along the way and, and did some, mm-hmm. some crazy stuff with him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you're, you know, and you're working with other people too, cause, uh, you, you're working with, uh, John Feldman's camp net lately now too, or. Yeah. Yeah. John Feldman, a legend. I actually, yesterday Goldfinger did a, a taping, a live taping for at the Roxy, kind of like how, um, MGK did a lot of mm. bands are doing that now. And, yeah. um, I was lucky enough to come up on stage and sing a song with him. So that should be out soon. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah no i I freaking love john he's awesome and um we've made some cool stuff together he'll call me in a lot to help with different projects so yeah it's crazy uh you know i i I grew up listening to to, uh to his band and to see that he's just this huge producer now it's crazy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and you've also uh wrote on um the used the used uh that uh, was john most recent album yeah, John had me in for that. I was just shaking the whole time. I don't even know really what happened. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, if the song's done, I'm having convulsions in the corner being like, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> it was so tight. 
Um, that's yeah. funny. That's funny that yeah. you were shaking, you know, after, cause after everything you did. So was there something, did, do you have a pr particular affinity for the used or, or are you, is there always just kind um, of a nervous energy when you're doing something big? No, the used was special for me because it's funny. I actually on the Xantor, I did a flip of the taste of ink, uh, ah, did, like okay. put a trap beat under it. So it was nice. kind of symbolic in that way. And just weird serendipitous you know what i mean like yeah. you're like what how how did this happen and i met john feldman through the hana this other band that they yeah. had me on and yeah, then I interviewed them a few weeks back oh yeah like the the coolest sweetest people and then i For met sure. john through them so shout outs to ryan and daniel and the hana that is like that was crazy but um yeah, I don't know. The use is just special and Burr is like such a legend and like an incredible singer. And like, that's the pure example of just bleeding emotion through his voice. You know, like he is that, that that's like what I would want to strive to be always. And like such an incredible writer too. Yeah. So what's interesting is, you know, you say, it's, you know, you, it seems like you're, you, you feel like a lot of this was serendipitous. Um, mm -hmm. So do you feel, how do you feel, how do you lock into kind of, cause I feel like what you, you're probably doing is you're locked into the, uh, you know, to some energy in some way. Do you, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you feel? Do you do certain things to just kind of lock into this energy that, that gets you going to the right places? Um, yeah, I try to, I, I try to, run from situations that don't feel good and I try to stay in situations that do feel good and I think when you do that then it's, it's fine but if you like stay in situations or are around people that don't make you feel good then only like more bad things can come from that and also it's just like trusting your gut you know like I think this year I did get a little like mixed up. Obviously, I think everyone did with yeah. quarantine and stuff, just mm -hmm. confusing myself with For sure. what I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like your gut, you know, like your gut is always right. So you got to just go with it. Yeah. No, man. I meditate too. I do meditation and I read a lot. I'm like really tapped into like Abraham Hicks stuff too. Um, and mm -hmm. I just try to keep my brain healthy, you know? Yeah. What I don't, I don't think I've uh, looked into Abraham Hicks. What's, uh, what's he about? Basically um, the whole idea of it is it's kind of like law of attraction, but it's mm -hmm. different. It was came before the secret and all that. This is like, th this is what everyone rips off of. It's like the OG. Mm. Mm. Um, and it's okay. basically this lady, Esther Hicks, um, channels an entity called abraham hicks and just like uh no i have I, now i now now i remember this is uh, yeah I, I have heard of her yeah and i have listened to some of her stuff okay yeah I, you jogged my memory okay very yeah, cool yeah so i don't I'm, i don't ever like you know strongly ab abide or follow anything strictly but i do pick pieces up here and there that i feel are you know applicable to my life so yeah yeah yeah, I heard uh, another artist talking about her a few months ago. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Really? With, yeah, with uh, Josh Homme. He's the lead singer of uh, Queens of the Stone Age. I heard him. Yeah, in fuck talk, yeah, dude. Yeah, That's I heard him. Sick. Yeah, he was talking about her, and I was like, oh, all right, I should check this person out. So I checked out some YouTube videos. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that. So uh, your your Vacuum Head EP was released last year and got yes. millions of streams. So obviously, uh, you know, the you know, these these pivotal points have 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 garnered you a, a fandom, which is awesome. Um, yes. And so and are you still completely independent? Are you on a label now or what are you doing? Um, I am independent. Yeah, I'm independent. So I'm That's holding awesome. out. I have a, I have a a sweet deal with a company called Caroline Jacqueline Saturn shout outs the queen. And it's basically, it's kind of a new wave format for um, artists, but it's not, it's not a major label by any means. I get complete freedom to do what I want and I'm not locked in in a way that, you know, some people are with their labels. So I'm very blessed to be there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and you're releasing, you know, you're releasing singles this year. Uh, I was just listen, listening to STFU. That song's a banger. I love that one. Added it to my playlist. Um, Hell yeah! So are you Thank are you. you 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, are you dropping more music this year after that single? Yes, I am. I'm dropping a remix to that song with someone on it. And then nice. I am uh, dropping another song. And then we're probably going to wrap up the EP in December. Um, but yeah, I got I got a remix and then at least a few more, you know, things happening. And then the EP. Nice. Yeah. When's, when's the EP so, supposed to drop? I think December. It keeps kind of changing based on like the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's changed a lot of times this year already. So at this mm -hmm. point, I'm kind of just like, hmm, I'm going to just let this. EP decide for itself when it wants yeah. to come out because I'm <laughs> I tried you know but um yeah just going with it just going with the flow but just dropping singles and all that it's tight yeah know. yeah that it's song's cool. that song's <laughs> rad uh, those who haven't heard it check it out that's a banger um well thanks so much for sharing your crazy you. story with us fem um we like to uh Thank you. Last question we like to ask is, you know, <laughs> and uh, okay. uh, I, is if you had a one piece of advice to give to aspiring artists, what would it be? Hmm. My one piece of advice. Hmm. Or a few. No pressure. I would say if you're an aspiring artist, yeah, I would say um, don't look around too much at what other people are doing. I take it into account because you being you is what's going to sting to people. You know, there's a lot of people just trying to ride waves of trends and all this, and I'm guilty of it too. Everyone is. But I think what really stands out, the real best artists in the world are themselves 100% themselves always. 